my channel. I'm Sierra, and today I'm going to be doing a smoky rose gold eye. If you'd like to see how I got this look, grab your homemade Starbucks drink like I did, and please keep watching. Okay, so welcome back. Let's get started. We're going to be doing a pretty rose gold kind of smoked out look today to go with our outfit. Um, today I'm going to start priming my face with the Hourglass Primer. Because with basically the hourglass vanishing stick, I'm going to just make a few swipes across the face. Nose, I've got some pretty large pores around the sides and then right here, right beside the nose. So I'm going to use my Porefessional. So I've been taking it kind of in my lap lines just a little bit. So what you want to do, just dab it in the areas you want it to go. So a little bit on my nose first, on the sides, and then I'm going to take a little bit more, whatever's left on my fingers and go along my lap lines and just dab it in. We'll be going in with the Hourglass Vanish Foundation Stick to make a few little stripes here and there. It is full coverage, so you know, just use as much as you want. And also I like to go in with the Fit Me Matte Poreless. Go in with the color Creamy Beige, so that's 122. you always bring it down your neck and make sure that the colors match and if they do match just make sure you blend it well and don't have a line here on your jaw bones or under your chin or anything like that okay so I forgot before putting on foundation to conceal my dark circles but they're pretty bad so I'm actually just using the Anastasia cream contour kit and I mix these two it's like this pinkish coral color and um, more of like a skin to my skin tone concealer mix them together and get like a pretty pinkish orange color and then I just go in only on the dark part so don't take it like most dark circles are right here that's where they end so don't take it like below that because you don't really want that to be covered or concealed it's gonna make it look kind of like a different weird color and just blend them out just a little bit. And I'm, just, I'm using my Real Techniques Damp Sponge, which is very stained. <laughs> I've tried cleaning it, soaking it, washing it, everything, and it won't just it just won't come out. The color is there forever. Next, I'm going to be doing my concealer, which lately I've been mixing the Tarte Shape Tape and the NYX HD Studio Photo Finish next to my tanned skin now so I just put that really in the corners mainly and just a few spots here and there like my chin and of course around my nose really right in the corners because my nose starts to turn red throughout the day and just a few spots here and there to highlight and then I'll actually go back in with my NYX HD concealer in a little bit darker color which is going to be the correct concealing color for my skin tone right now. I'll just take a little bit and we're going to go over that and then everywhere I would normally put concealer I'm going to take this NYX concealer and put that there. So you basically just go right over where you put the tape, the shape tape and everywhere else that you would normally conceal. To conceal around my nose a little bit more lately because I notice it just always gets red so, so this combination is working really great for me because the NYX by itself the NYX HD concealer by itself isn't my favorite concealer but mixing it with the coverage that the shape tape gives you it is just the perfect combination the color is perfect and the combination and coverage is also perfect so if you've never tried the NYX HD concealer, it is definitely worth a try, especially if you're going to mix it with such a great concealer like the Shape Tape or whatever great concealer you use. I've, I've got lots of different concealers that I love. It's just right now the Shape Tape is really doing it for me. And because I went in after my foundation with my color correcting under my eyes, you may have to take one more swipe of your concealer underneath your eyes if you've not got enough coverage or that pinkish color is not gone. If you do it before foundation, it usually takes care of it the first try. You don't have to add extra concealer on top of your concealer. But I did it backwards because I'm still asleep. I've got my homemade Starbucks caramel macchiato to wake me up and 
it's still not waking me up quite yet. Might do a couple of things backwards today, but it will get done nonetheless, so that's all that matters. In combination of that with my finishing spray, my primer water by Smashbox, oh, it smells so good. My face smells wonderful. Like a floral garden. <laughs> so now that my under eyes are concealed, which I had to go back in one more time with the Tarte Shape Tape to make sure all of the pink was blended in, which it is now, so... Once I got that finished, I did take just a little bit of concealer that was left over on my sponge and just got it on my eyes. That way they're all the same color and I have a nice uh, skin toned base to work with. I don't have to worry about any of my veins. Once I'm finished, I will immediately, of course, go back in and buff out any lines or creases that might be under the eyes on both sides. And then I'll go in with my Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. And with that, I really bake it under the under eye right here where I usually crease. So first blend out all of your lines and creases. I go with the opposite side, so this flatter side, and then I pick up my product, quite a bit of the product, and then go directly in under my eyes where it creases the most, and I bake it for a little bit. Not too long because you don't want it to be dry, but I go right in immediately after blending, and bake that so it won't crease on me throughout the day because nobody wants the under eyes to be all creased up and cakey mm. so i'll just go ahead and go all the way down to the creases in my nose you know on the corners and the edges because i do tend to get oily there and i notice that if i'll set it with this translucent powder it really doesn't get very oily throughout the day um it wears, it's been humid lately here in Kentucky, so it wears pretty good in the humidity and it doesn't get oily there if I set it immediately after concealing. Once I get finished setting my under eye, I, I let it sit there for just a little bit and then I go ahead and kind of set the rest of my highlighted places with the same translucent powder. I have to go down the bridge of my nose as well. I'll set it right after with the translucent powder. It does really well and it doesn't really move around on me or get super oily. We can go ahead and dust away the under eye. Go back in with some more powder. This is the Sephora brand face powder. I'm in the color 20 Neutral Beige. I just take a really fluffy powder brush and go in. So basically you just want this to be anywhere you did not highlight with your concealer helps the rest of your foundation just stick all day it won't move around on you next we are going to go ahead and start on the eyes I'm going in with the first naked palette that came out I'm going in with the shade naked as my transition color and yes this has seen lots of love I've already completely hit pan on these two shades um, so I'm gonna go in first I'm just gonna use a really fluffy blending brush so we'll go in again with the naked as our transition color and you want to go in windshield wiper motions and just buff it all along your crease okay so I finished my transition color on this other eye and what I'm gonna do next is go in with another blending brush it's a little bit smaller a little bit more dense blending brush and we're gonna use the uh, darker shade the next darker shade which is buck right here it's gonna get a little bit there and then we're gonna go basically right here in our corner and we're going to kind of smoke it out just a little bit you know a light smoky brown original fluffy brush and then blend all of our corners and all of our lines and make sure everything is just a seamless finish. Copy break. So with any smoky or semi-smoky eye, you're going to want to blend a lot. It's going to require a little bit of time. Go back in just with a little bit of our naked shade, our transition shade. We're going to blend out any harsh lines we might have from darkening our crease. Back in my corner, right down here, and kind of darkening it up. I want a little bit more dimension. I don't want it to be too super intense or dramatic, so we're not gonna go any darker than the buck in the corners. Next, I'm going to go in with the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil. This is in the color Yogurt 611, and this is just a pretty rose gold color. Since we're going with rose gold, I thought I would go ahead and put this down as the base. So we're going to do basically all of the lid, not bothering that transition color. We're just going to roll it on there and we'll blend it out next. Smooth out 
everything I just put in. Try to keep that as low as possible, not going above the lid into the crease any. I'll be using the Pure Cosmetics Buff Collection, which is their rose gold collection. We'll be going in with these beautiful colors. So I'm going to be probably using the Sahara and Mesa colors, these two right here. I'm going to pack those on the lid on top of our creamy rose gold base. I'm going to mix them, Sahara and Mesa. So we'll mix those two and make sure you tap off because this does have a little bit of fallout. It is a shimmer, so we don't want that falling all over our face. And we're going to pack this onto the lid. I'm going to be using the Ofra Color Wheel in Beverly Hills. I'm going to go in with the top champagne shade on my inner highlight. I might mix it with this lighter shade as well. A little bit smaller fluffy brush. And I'm going to go back into the Naked palette and I'm going to use naked first and we're just going to blend that naked shade out. I'm only going to bring this naked shade halfway in so stop in about the middle of the eye with the shade and then we're going to go in with our shimmery rose gold colors. Using that same small blender I'm going to go in with Buck also and just darken up the outer corner on the lower lash line as well. Kind of bringing it around just a little bit. That Go back in with your densely packed brush that we picked up our rose gold shadows on. Again, mixing the two Mesa and Sahara. I am going to get the inner part of the lower lash line. Doing eyeliner next. So in with the It Cosmetics No Tug Waterproof Gel Liner Stick. Tarte Black Paint Liner. Wet n Wild Liner Brush. Just go in tight line. Pull out. It's okay, I have more. And we're gonna hit the top of the lash line. I'm gonna do just a teeny tiny little wing, nothing huge. <laughs> Went really dramatic, really quick. mess up any of your liner. Q-tips are God's gift to the makeup world. I always mess up right here in my inner corner so I'll go in and just swipe it away with the end of a Q-tip and it works amazing. I'm going to go ahead and go in with my Beauty Counter Color Define Brow Pencil and I'm going to do that off camera just because it takes me a hundred years to do. So 25 minutes later and they're done. I'm going to be applying false lashes. Okay, falsies are on and I actually did go back in with some Fix Plus and dampened my brush and just packed on a little bit more of these rose gold colors on the lower lash line and my lid. I'm gonna go in with my L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black Mascara. go in with my Glamouflage Hard Candy. It's basically a concealer stick. There we go. And it just opened up the eyes a little bit more. Now that our eyes are finished, we're going to go into bronzing and contouring our face. And I'm using my new Cheek Parade by Benefit. Going in with this beautiful new palette. This is my first time ever using the Benefit or the Hoola bronzer and I really love it. I'm just mixing them both and I'm using a very large fluffy brush by Real Techniques and I'm just going to mix the two and I'm going to bronze up my face. You don't need a whole lot going in at first and if you see that you need more I would dip back in but I wouldn't go in with a heavy hand at first because you can always add more but you can't take it away so if you add too much well you got too much bronze on your face and then you look silly. So I just bronze up the cheeks first and with this fluffy brush I try to still be a little bit more precise in the area that I put it. So I'm trying to stick to my jaw line. I'm just going back in with my fluffy brush that I used for my foundation powder. Next I'm going to take a little bit more of a dense brush. I'm going to go into the Hoola. I'm 
I'm gonna go back in one more time with my fluffy brush and I'm gonna make sure it is all blended well. Not blended. go in with a slanted brush and I'm going to actually pick up both Rocketeer and Dandelion. Right back into my translucent powder to make sure that everything is nice and cut and precise on my jaws. I'm going to dip back in my okra, Beverly Hills color wheel. And I'm going to try to grab the champagne color and a little bit of the gold, which it's very gold, just a little bit. Too much highlight. I'm just like obsessed. I need all the highlights. I want it everywhere. I don't care if I am the glowiest glowy person in the room. I will show up with that much highlight on my face. With the same brush, a little bit of this pinky color, light pink. Go ahead and set my face. Smashbox. Just fan it out. I'm going to go ahead and line my lips and do my lipstick for my liner. I'm going to go in with the NYX Natural. I'm going in with the new 530 Hot Sand. And this is supposed to be a matte finish. So I'm going to go in with this lip color. This is the finished look. If you liked what you saw today, then please subscribe and thumbs up this video. And if there's anything else, any looks you want me to try, please just comment below and tell me what you want me to try and I'd be happy to try those out for you guys.